Praise the Lord, mighty prophet of the Lord. Amen, Pastor Raymond. Now, um, I would like uh, your listeners to know that the Lord has spoken with me. The Lord Jehovah El Olam, Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd, that you see in the book of Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of Israel, that you see in First Samuel chapter 1, verse 6. Jehovah Elohim, our eternal creator. And in this conversation, the Lord has again spoken with me about the nearness with which we have drawn towards the coming of the Messiah. And the entire bottom line, the entire objective and message of this conversation is that the nations of the earth, the peoples of this planet earth, the church of Christ on this earth, the elect of God may pursue righteousness, may return to holiness, and that they may stay away from wickedness and sin, anything that is defiled and cleanness, that they may embrace repentance and holiness as a means of preparing the way for the coming of the Messiah. And that entire process of preparing the way essentially underscores, emphasizes, exalts the glorious garment that the church ought to be wearing at this time. The garment of righteousness, the garment of holiness, the garment that has no wrinkle, no stain, neither does it have any mark, stretch marks. Now, in this conversation, the Lord is allowing me to see a massive earthquake that is coming to visit the earth. I see a very, very massive historic earthquake coming to visit the earth. And I see myself running also. I run. I am running. The Lord has placed me inside that earthquake. And I am running for my life also. And it's amazing because I see the ridges. It's, uh, th th there's a mountain on this side, a very fearful mountain, and, and, and the Lord showed me the earthquake is sh shaking, has shaken that mountain before, but is shaking again, and that place is deadly, and then it's moving towards this side. I see a lot, I see, I see a hill, a hilly place, and I see ridges. The, the earthquake has split cracks on certain hills in front of the mountain, and it makes me run. Some other side of those mountainous hills are totally pulverized by the earthquake. They are rubbished. They are totally graveled. And then I'm running with people. We are running for our lives because this other side is too deadly. And then as I'm running, the Lord makes me see some buildings. I am seeing now one of the buildings has a writing that seems to be M. Either it looks more like M O A S. I-T or S-T-I or M-O-E, something like Moist, the Moist, Moist, or Moist, Moist. I don't know exactly what how to pronounce it, but I see M-O-A-S-I-T, something like that. And I think that the Lord is giving a direction that this earthquake will happen where these kind of people are, the Moist movement. There is a movement, I think, between Nepal and India, which has actually been uh, fighting the establishment. They have a land, that kind of territory, you know. So there's a severe earthquake coming to the earth, and I see the tremendous shaking and running. I was running in terror, and I still see myself even now running, terrified, in complete terror. So... Now, this earthquake is coming to visit the earth at a very important time because the Bible speaks in the book of Matthew 24, verse 7, that in these days prior, right prior to the coming of the Messiah, some of the key features that will highlight, that will mark, that will, will set us apart, this dispensation apart from any other, 
is that we will be able to see the vivid signs of the coming of the Messiah. And one of them, as he says in Matthew 24, verse 7, he says there will be earthquakes, but he combines it with the global crisis, financial crisis, the famine that you see coming globally. And you see many nations are announcing famine, there is famine. So, and then the floods that I said would come and I see the crops wiped out. So that means there will be famine. So he says in Matthew 24, verse 7, there will be earthquakes and famines in various places. And so this announcement here essentially announces the coming of the Messiah. And I think until now, we have come out very clean and clear. Ever since the Lord sent me, I have come out very clean and clear that the matters of sin have been resolved now. Those who want to enter heaven can now choose against sin. They can choose against, against the unrighteousness, ungodliness, wickedness, and evil. Because the Holy Spirit, the visitation of the Godhead, of God the Father, that is in the house of the Lord at this hour, comes for the purpose of preparing the way for the coming of the Messiah. And that's why Isaiah 26, 19 to 21, when Isaiah saw this visitation coming to this generation we are in, Isaiah said, shout for joy, because he said, it remains joy throbbing the church. For your dew is as fresh as the dew of the morning. And he says that the earth cannot conceal, because Isaiah then sees the rapture of the church. Go, my people, enter your rooms, shut the doors behind you for a little while. And then after, that is the rapture of the church. He sees the elect saints the holy church, that that visitation. It's a shout for joy, for your dew is as fresh as the dew of the morning. And then after that, then he says, Go, my people, enter your room and shut the door behind you for a little while. And he says, Look, the Lord is coming out of his dwelling to punish the people of the earth for their sins. And so it has come out very clearly that the visitation, the humongous visitation we behold now in the church, the visitation of the Godhead, the visitation of the cloud of God that visited Moses, the cloud that passed by Elijah the prophet, the visitation that was promised as the latter anointing and the latter glory in the church. Now, this visitation in the house of Jehovah at this hour comes to prepare the church. And that's why I say the matters of sin are now well announced, you see. The, the, the rejecting of sin has been well announced. The, the position of the Lord on sin is now very clear. Even where the church did not understand, she was be, you know, kind of uh, caught up between two worlds, between the house of the Lord and the world. That, that, that has now passed because there is a visitation in the house of the Lord. And that's why, as I stand here, announcing the coming of that humongous earthquake, I want also to make it very clear here. I want to make it clear that these are the signs for the coming of the Messiah. And that for those whose ears, spiritual ears are open, they can go ahead and prepare for the coming of the Messiah. The visitation of God the Father is in the house. And that's why there's so much purging going on, so much restoration and healing anointing that is visiting right now. And so this announcement of the coming of the terrible earthquake, the terrible temblor, the shaking that is coming, essentially goes a long way to just re-emphasize again that the coming of the Messiah is near. That in whatsoever you do, you should now maintain an eternal perspective. In other words, you ask yourself, how does this thing I'm doing today help my eternity with God? How does this conversation I'm having on the phone help my eternity with God? How does this trip I'm going to help my eternity in heaven? How does my job help my eternity with God? Everything now has to be placed in the context of eternity in heaven with God. Because the Messiah is coming. I have seen the coming of the Messiah. And we are living for a major mission in Europe to announce the same, that they too may be given a chance to prepare for the glorious coming of the Messiah. May those who have ears happen to the words of the Lord 
and prepare for the glorious coming of the Lord. Shalom.